Well, welcome to the channel viewers, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Look, I, I'm, I'm a little bit shocked. I, um, I've i just uh, glanced over, just out of curiosity, um, sons that have killed their mothers, and there's too many. There's too many. <clears throat> Florida man, 25, is sentenced to 50 years in prison for fatally stabbing, stabbing his mother after she asked him why he wasn't looking for a job and threatened to kick him out of the house. There's mum and there's the drugs. You can see there's drugs. Let's see if drugs come up in this. Quite an attractive looking woman, mum, there. I'll just reduce this. Nathaniel Chamel from Palm Coast, Florida, was sentenced to 50 years in prison. The 25-year-old pleaded guilty to second-degree murder Wednesday after initially facing a first-degree murder charge. Chamel admitted to fatally stabbing, stabbing his mother, Michelle Chamel, 60. She was only 60. During an argument in their kitchen on August 23, 2017. He told detectives his mother had confronted him about why he was not looking for a job and threatened to kick him out of the house. And this is where the father comes in, isn't it? Because it's not the mother's job to sort these little golden child grubs out. She made, she brought this on herself. I'm sorry, Michelle, but you brought this on yourself. And if you look at the ages, they're around 50 to 60, 55, 60. These grubs are given so much authority over these women's lives, they turn on them and kill them because there's no, there's no discipline. It's all grandiose grooming, enmeshment, pedestalizing. They drive these people mad. Their mothers drive them mad. Shamel said he then panicked and grabbed a kitchen knife off the counter, just like that. He admitted to stabbing his mum in the throat and multiple times in the chest before finally putting the knife in her back. That's lovely, isn't it? I'll stab you in the back just to finish off, mum. I'll tell you what really concerns me, viewers, and, and I'll be honest with you. You know I'm a, a component of covert emotional incest because I've seen it ruined marriages overnight and my relationships overnight. Um, and I've tried to have tolerance and work with it, and you can't. And the problem with it is these, these single mothers, they grandiose and pedestalize and groom and enmesh and worship and praise and exonerate and support and supply and spoil. And these adult men, young men, and they're enabling them to bend towards evil. They've got no direction, no discipline, no responsibility, no accountability towards their character. And that's what the father does, or supposed to, make them accountable to themselves. And these women are doing the opposite. They're making them so unaccountable and so irresponsible, they're killing their mothers. Lock your doors, you single mothers at night. You've spoiled your children and caught, created them to become evil. And I believe a lot of these young men don't just want to kill their mothers, they want to have sex with their mothers as well. And if they don't get that, that can lead them to killing. Nathaniel Ryder Shamel getting fingerprinted this morning after being sentenced to 50 years in prison in the stabbing death of his mother, Michelle, three years ago. Nathaniel... The 25-year-old Palm, and a lot of them around 25 to 30. Palm Coast resident facing first-degree murder charge in the stabbing death of his mother, Michelle, three years ago, pleaded guilty this morning to second-degree murder. Circuit Judge Terence Perkins sentenced him to 50 years in prison, closing the homicide case of longer state on the Flagler Court's docket. Shamel had faced the possibility of life imprisonment. His 50-year sentence will be followed by a lifetime probation 
He's been at the Fager County Jail since the day of his, the murder. So he gets 1,211 days credit for his time served, or three years and a third. He is required to serve a minimum of 85% of his sentence, or 42 and a half years, with his credit. And if he maintains good behaviour in prison, he will be eligible to leave prison in 39 years, around early 2060, when Shamel will be 64. The prosecution consulted with Michelle Shimel's family before the plea and agreed to the terms as family members wanted closure. Shimel has a sister. His parents had divorced a few years before the murder. His father had lived in St. Augustine but has been out of touch more recently. <sighs> Single mothers. The brief hearing before Perkins was uneventful, but for the fact that Shamel appeared in court in person for the first time since the coronavirus pandemic, pandemic with Assistant State Attorney Mark Johnson, who has been prosecuting the case in the last several months, and Assistant Public Defenders Rosemary People and Matt Phillips. Others appeared by Zoom. The judge went through a list of questions to establish that Shamel was understanding the terms of the sentence exactly, and that he was pleading willingly and without coercion. The judge asked Shamel if he wanted to make a statement to the court, which Shamel said no. Do you suffer from any, any medical conditions, Perkins asked him. Asperger's, Shamel said, referring to a disorder characterised by difficulties in social interactions and communications. What type of symptoms does that produce? That was a long silence. Shamel turned to his attorney and then said, having problems with eye contact, for one, inability to make quick decisions. There's a list, but I can't go through it now. Well, <clears throat> when we read the other story, it said that he, when she, his mother asked him why he didn't get a job um, and he was going to be having to leave the house, he turned immediately and grabbed a kitchen knife. That's a pretty quick decision, isn't it? And stabbed it, stabbed it to death. The evening of the murder at 47 Wood Hollow Lane in Palm Coast, where Shamel had been living with his mother, he and Michelle had gotten into the latest of many arguments about Nathaniel's indecision about making something different of himself, or something of himself. Her last words to her son, Look at me when I'm talking to you. Ha! He said she grabbed him as she was yelling at him, and he had just panicked. He would later tell investigators, I just happened, it just happened. He picked up a knife and repeatedly stabbed her. See, she was fed up with this kid. She'd come to her senses and realised that she'd ruined him, that she's misled him by her grandiosity towards him and pedestalisation. And she couldn't turn him around. He then called 911 and at the first blamed a masked assailant. He would eventually confess during an interrogation with detectives, describing his acts and his mother's death in front of his eyes with precise detail, crying between fits of description. His mother had fought back and pleaded, but was overpowered. Nathaniel told detectives he watched her bleed out and die. Hang him. Fucking hang him. A psychological evaluation determined him to be on the autism spectrum, but Shamel was highly functioning. He graduated high school, attended classes at Daytona State College, and he said he wasn't sure what he wanted to do in major, in, to do a major in, and had built his own computer. It appears for today, you're not having trouble making on, eye contact with me, is that correct? Perkins asked Shamel who looked and spoke like any ordinary young man answering routine questions without trouble, and yes, Shamel said. Shamel then pleaded no contest with adjudicated guilty and sentenced. His probation terms mean that he will be subject to random, warrantless searches for the rest of his life. He will be required to remain in the county absent special permission to leave. He will be barred from frequenting bars or using drugs, which he, see, drug addict, and will be subjected to random drug testing. There it is. I told you it was drug-related. Probation violations could result in his return to prison. He will be required to pay monthly tax costs for his probation supervision, but the judge agreed to delay those costs, kicking six months 
kicking in six months after his release from prison, which wasn't going to be for another 50 years. There was only one other request from the defence. Shamel wanted his glasses returned. The glasses were an important piece of evidence for the prosecution. We can't release those at this time, Johnson said. The reason, the case may yet be appealed, so the glasses still have evident to revalue. The judge agreed that they will be withheld. Although this is an agreed resolution of the case, you have an absolute right to appeal the court sentence, the judge said. Such appeals are routine. They go to the 5th District Court of Appeal in Daytona Beach. They very rarely result in reversals, especially in a plea agreement. Today's disposition removes one of the more vexing cases from the court's docket. Perkins had previously described himself embarrassed by the many delays that had attended the case, more recently because of the pandemic, making a jury trial with 12 jurors and two alternates especially difficult to carry out. No felony trials are scheduled through the end of the year, but January's docket is heavy. Absent a plea, Shamil's trial had tentatively been scheduled for this week, though it is unlikely the judge would have allowed it to go forward due to the continued high load of coronavirus cases in the country. He stabbed his mother to death. I've been concerned about the high rates of single mother parents being stuck with adult males in their house, even though they are their children. I've seen how violent and hostile and malicious, sorry viewers, these people can get. Um, I've had the hostility aimed at me and vendettas and all other stuff. I've done nothing wrong to these women except love them and care for them and want what's best for them. I've been driven to the point where I've had to say, I'm sorry, but you need to go. Um, because they enable these young adult delinquents, um, bastards, um, narcissists, to have the authority of a parent over the parent while the parent has like the authority of a child and they pedestalize them and enable them and supply them in a way in which completely undermines the motivation, the internal instinctual motivation that they need to have to get somewhere in life. Emotional enmeshment, emotional incest is one of the most diabolical and subtle forms of personal sabotage a, pers a parent can do to their children because the child will gravitate into it and it's like a fog that they can't find their way back out of and I really do ask all people that have gotten to this stage in the video to learn about covert emotional incest and the dangers thereof this is a manifestation of, 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 of a severe consequence due to this kind of thing. And I'm constantly warning people through the channels to be well aware of what's happening to single mothers. Behind the scenes, they're being abused, they're being used, they're being threatened. On the other hand, they're being groomed in a way in which uh, they are again, housing and financially supporting and supplying these people with food and drugs and alcohol and all these other things that really um, is not the part of being... In fact, it's negligent parenting. And this is what happens. The child then turns and resents the parent for spoiling them and disenabling them to find their way in life in a masculine way. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it growing up with friends. And no good has come out of it for the parent or the child ever, ever. <clears throat> Please study covert emotional incest and understand how dangerous it is. You're with Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. 
Gosford, Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channels, please do. That's a religious channel. This is the Trady channel. Uh, I do thank you for joining me. Um, like, share and comment. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.